Our next caller is Gabby from California. Gabby, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi. Um, I have been having an issue with my knee. Um, I got MAPS Prime and Prime Pro. Um, but it, I mean, I work long hours. I'm a bartender, so I'm standing a lot. Um, but I've tried, you know, like 90 90. I've tried stretching. It seems to hurt a little bit more when I'm trying to come out of a stretch. So I don't know if it's helping or if it's hurting. So I'm a little bit lost because I can't really, I mean, I can squat, but not that heavy. Or if I go heavy, it hurts. And then if I don't squat, I just, I don't know. It kind of sucks. Okay. Um, so try this. This is like a miracle cure. Take Icy Hot, Ben Gay, Stop and Tiger Balm. <laughs> Whatever he's going to say. Yeah, I'm joking. It's, it's, yeah. Totally Garbage. joking. Okay, so I, I know you wrote your question up here, and you had asked why MAPS Prime and Prime Pro don't have a knee section. So let me address that first, Gabby, and then I'm going to ask you a few more questions. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So the reason why we don't have specific knee mobility movements in those programs is because knee pain issues – tend to come from almost almost always the ankles or the hips, okay? So, and the reason being is if you look at the knee joint, it only moves kind of in two directions. It, do, it flexes and extends. It doesn't rotate and it doesn't bend laterally. It only flexes and extends. The ankle and the hip are, they move all over the place. They, they move laterally, they rotate, they twist. They have lots of movement in comparison to the knee. And so what happens is if the ankle or the, or the hip lack strength and stability, then the ligaments of the knee tend to create that mm -hmm. stability. And then over time, you can create problems or even in a short time, you can get yourself an injury. Which is also why she's probably feeling pain when she gets in and out of the 90-90. Yeah. So yeah. Here's, oh, here's a tip with the 90-90, by the way. Whenever you're in a position where you're externally or internally rotating the leg. So in 90-90, you have both, right? One leg is externally rotated. That's the front leg. And then one is internally rotated. That's the back leg. Make sure you flex your ankle. Bring mm. your toes towards your shin because what that'll do, what that'll do is that'll bolster, bolster the knee joint a little bit because what it sounds like is it sounds like you've got a little bit of inflammation and pain in some of the ligaments that prevent the rotating of the knee. And because you're rotating the hip and those are tight or lack stability, the knee is doing is trying to stabilize with the ligament. So does that make sense where you take your you take your foot and you bring your toes towards your shin and flex that while you're in position? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I okay. would also have her foam roll before she gets in the 99. Yeah. That'll help. She might be so tight that when she's getting in that, that's why right. I feel she probably feels pain in yeah. the well, Especially, yeah, I'm trying to see of like how it's tracking. You know, if, if you're really like tight along your IT band and like along the sides, like Adam said, that would help to kind of, you know, help put you in a better position. Also, too, if you have access to yoga blocks, um, this is too, a, another way to kind of regress, you know, some of the intensity there within the 90-90 position. You elevate, you know, your leg a bit or you have, you know, a, your hand is able to kind of, um, you know, start from a higher position, which makes it uh, more easy to get into that position. Yeah. And, and also don't forget uh, ankle mobility. Uh, so like, if my knees bother me, it's. I used to think it was my hips all the time, um, and I'd work on hip stuff, and it would help a little bit, but not a ton. And then I learned later, it's all, it was all in my ankles. So, mm. working on my ankle mobility, and even you know supplementing a little bit with my ankle mobility made a huge difference. Well, so, one test of that that Dr. Brink's done with us quite a bit is if, if you squat, if you squat with your heels elevated and you don't feel pain and it feels pretty um, natural and easy, um, you know, that's something that uh, a lot of times will you need to look at, at your ankle mobility and, and, you know, address that specifically. There's a YouTube video that I did. I believe it's uh, fixed knee pain. Doug, is that? You? Yes, it is. Is that yeah. what it is? So we brought it up on a show before, and again, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay. So ch check that video really out, Gabby, because I, I believe I, I addressed the foam rolling. I believe I addressed the ankle mobility all in there. So that's something that you can do uh, before you get it. But that's the the reason why uh, there's nothing in Prime or Prime Pro related knees, because it's going to be ankle or hip always. So that's kind of the area, all the exercises and work in, that, in those programs that's centered around the ankles mm -hmm. and the hips is basically where you need to be. If it's really uncomfortable to get in the 90-90, there's a good chance. I don't know for sure, but there's a good chance that it's related to your IT. And then in that video mm -hmm. I, I just referenced, you'll it shows you how to foam roll the IT. That'll give you a little bit of relief 
before you go into the 9090, and then that should help you out. And that's just something that you want to practice religiously. This is such a visual thing too, is uh, us trying to like, you know, figure this out and, and cue and coach. Uh, one thing like, so do you notice at all if your knees travel outward or inward when you squat down? So um, I normally like, I feel like I have, it's more comfortable for me to have like a little bit of a wider stance and have my feet pointed out a little bit. Um, and then I know like your knees are not supposed to cave in, obviously. So I work on like pushing them out. Mm, so it's more uh, actually rotates more comfortable. Yeah. So, and it's always been that way. And I had been squatting for like, I don't know, maybe like two years before I had any issues. Okay. Um, and pretty heavy. And then I think it was when I started like running and squatting, um, maybe, I don't know. I think one day, I remember one day specifically, um, I had ran like two miles and then that same day happened to be leg day. And I just like went really IT. Yeah. IT, IT for sure. Really I, yeah. hundred percent yeah. IT I would, for sure. After getting tight like that from the squats and then going out running like that, I guarantee that when you, have you ever foam rolled your IT before? Um, I have. So the thing is, it's mostly like the inner side of my knee. Like it hurts more the closer I bring. Um, like if I sit crisscross or like if I go from pigeon to active pigeon, I can feel like a okay. sharp. Yeah, this is your meniscus is trying to prevent your knee from twisting. That's, that's what that's what that that's what that is. So if you look at your knee joint, there's there's ligaments that prevent it from sliding forward, sliding back, bending laterally. And then you have the meniscus that prevents it from twisting. And so the reason why you're having pain when you're in pigeon or a 90, 90 is because your hips are rotating. So your, your leg is turning out and the, there's a little bit of lack of stability there. And so your meniscus is holding tight and you're probably giving yourself uh, a little bit of inflammation with that. Here, here's something. So the flexing of the foot will make a big difference, by the way. Um, it, it might not fix it completely, but it'll help you do some of these positions. So you got to bring the toes back. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're activating the tibialis and that provides a little bit of stability uh, in the knee, or at least it prevents the meniscus from doing um, so much. The other piece of advice I'd have for you, Gabby, is uh, for while you're working on this, I would do mostly unilateral exercises for your lower body. So I would avoid squats, uh, front squats, uh, those types of exercises. And I would do... I'd also take it easy on the running, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Take, take it easy on the running. And I would do unilateral stuff. Lunges, Bulgarian split stance squats, single leg toe touches. Just until things start to feel better, I'll go lighter and go slower. Um, just to allow the inflammation to, to, to get a little bit better before you progress back to your bilateral movements like squats. Okay. All right. Yeah, cool. that sounds awesome. Thank All right, cool. you, Kat. Hope that helps. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Gabby. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, the the whole knee issue um, is interesting because you know what you know what one of the challenges is. You'll say to somebody, "Well, it's usually the ankle or the hip, mm. right?" And they'll be like, "But I got imaging done, and I have you know patellar chondromalacia, or I have inflammation of well, the yeah." There's definitely the compensations happening, yes. ligament wise, but that's not ideal. No, yeah. and it's in in the you know that rotating aspect. Of, like for example, yeah. in in uh, jujitsu, there's a submission called a heel hook, and it's literally you're, you're twisting the leg while keeping their hips stationary, and people think it's a it's a foot lock, but it's not. It's tearing your knee. Yeah, right totally apart and that, and that's what's happening the ankle moves yeah. but the knee doesn't and then you get the the problem yeah we just got to get in better alignment and then you know everything sort of uh, uh we got to strengthen the supporting cast so that way like it keeps it stabilized yeah this will bother me too same thing yeah. if, if it's and it's my ankles if my ankles are really tight and i squat heavy that's exactly what i'll feel i'll feel on the inner outer part of my knee i just want to highlight too this is another reason why we tend to hammer the whole running thing so much too, because this is super common. It's yeah. super it's common like that gasoline somebody, on a problem. Yeah. And then if, she, if she's getting real tight from her squats and she's already got this, this condition or issue going on or the lack of ankle mobility and stability and hip mobility and stability. And then you go for a run on top of that. It's just like, you're, you're never going to get ahead of this and you're constantly going to be battling this. So, you know, regressing a little bit, it doesn't mean you can't go do cardio. You go, you know, hiking up a hill would be really good, you know, elliptical. something like that. Yeah, or elliptical. There's other things that we can do 
uh, instead of that. But this is why running can just be so yeah. rough. And the, the main body. reason isn't necessarily because running's bad. It's because no. nobody treats running it's like because she has bad movement, and then she goes and yeah. does it a lot. And, and no, basically, and, is what and you nobody to treats it like practice. Like yeah. if, you know, she's probably focused on her technique and form when she squats. But then when you run, what do you do? You run to fatigue. Yeah. yeah. And that's when things really start to you know hurt. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.